So as we work toward uh, creating this Android project that's based on our web app project from last month, we're using, of course, Cordova as our framework. And I've said it before, so I'll say it one more time, that it's not a very good idea to update your tools in the middle of a, of a project. Luckily for us, we're starting from the beginning. We're starting with Cordova 5.1.1, or whatever we have installed here. And we're going to keep it that way, even if, it, even if there's updates, because the problem is things change. So I'm seeing that in that I taught this class just a couple of months ago, maybe three months ago, and we were using Cordova 4.5. And then um, very recently, 5.0 was released, and then 5.1. So I'm seeing the differences. And, and on the one hand, you're a little more lucky in that you're starting with the, from, the uh, from the ground floor. Whereas uh, I that have seen the evolution of this, I see the changes and now I need to learn the changes and I need to explain the changes. And so some of, uh, there's a couple of students here and there that sometimes come back and take the class more than once. They also see that things have changed and evolved. So at the moment, uh, we're going to keep working uh, on the latest version of the code. And if there's any differences in quirks and such, I'll notice them. I mean, I'll note them from previous times. So if you don't quite have your devices working by now, that's OK. Just follow along for the moment, and then I'll help you out. Uh, I've got a virtual device here, and I've got my real device also set up to, to get two opinions. So if we go to the network folder, you can go to the network folder, go to our class. And in there, I've got a couple of things. We've got, I've got a project called Basic, which uh, we can use that, although it's probably going to change. So I've got the Basic project. That's the one. Hopefully, you don't need this, because you've got your version on your flash drive that we created together last time. If you need a copy of it, there it is. Um, you also probably don't need this. Let's use yours on your flash drive. Test. Remember, we made that test project copy and we were adding the uh, the camera feature to it so if you need any of one of those they're in my network folder there I'm gonna use the ones in my flash drive and then I'm gonna come back to this but while we're here you might as well copy to some location icons and splash those are some new things I just added and then also um, mobile website starts. That's the ending that's the ending point of our project from last time, from last month. You can use your own or you can use the one here that I've got, which I've tweaked just a little bit. Remember we finished last month and we still had a few parts that said blah blah blah. Well I went back in and I actually wrote a little bit meaningful text in a couple places. Nothing structurally. I cleaned up the code a little bit though and added some comments in the code. So that version of mobile website start is what I'm going to start with in this class. I recommend it also, or you can use your own. So you want a copy of those two folders. And I've also now got uh, Campus 7 and Campus 8 PDFs. You can get a copy of those, and you'll be able to print on the next break. But I've got some new sheets that we're going to get to eventually. So from my network folder, I've got icons and splash, mobile website, start, and sheets 7 and 8. Those are the two new ones. If you need the basic project and the test project, there they are. Now then, so let's open a node command prompt. Let's go to the start menu and load the node command prompt, of course. My project from last time is on my flash drive, um, on my Kingston right there, drive F. So to switch over from my C drive in the command prompt over to my F drive, remember you just type the, the letter of the drive, technically uppercase, lowercase, doesn't matter. But I'll type uppercase colon F, enter, you don't have to CD, it's not a directory. Um, and so jump over to your F drive. 
dir to orient yourself. I've got my apps folder. Everyone created an apps folder on their drive, hopefully. And we'll CD into that apps folder. If you got a copy of mine, of my test project from my folder, you put it somewhere. I don't know. You have to CD into it and such. That's why I'm saying hopefully you're doing this from your flash drive with your project instead of copying mine to your desktop. In any event, um, I'll CD into apps. DIR. I only have two things on my on my flash drive at the moment, basic and test. We're gonna keep working with test a little bit more just to get this to work. CD test. Now I I this is I, this is the second time I forgot to say this, but remember the first time we set up our device for developer mode, and I said at the end of the day I'll remind us to turn it off developer mode. Oops, I forgot twice already. So. Uh, if you activated your device for developer mode, you know, last week or whenever we first did it, sorry, it's still been on developer mode. No one's gotten any viruses, have they? No? Nope. Good. So, um, I, I've forgotten to remind us at the end of the day to set this to uh, back to normal. R remind me if I forget, because obviously I've got a lot in my mind, but remind me and I'll tell you how to turn it back. But it's just backwards to what we did together. We go back into the settings and turn off developer mode. Uh, what I also want to say is I've got still installed on my device a copy of, of, of test from last time. Sometimes there's a conflict if I try to deploy the same app on a different day to the same device. I'm going to try it right now and if I get an error I can show you what I mean. If I don't get the error I'll explain how to fix it. I've still got my camera app that didn't work it's called test, it's in my apps. I'm going to then go to Cordova, run Android, and either it will compile and deploy just fine, or it might come up with a weird error message or two, and basically the error message is trying to say there's already a version of this app installed on your device and it has a different signature. So it won't let us, it might not let us or let me deploy that app from last time onto my device. No problem. All I need to do is on the device uninstall the app. Uninstall the app and then I can go back and run Android and then it should obey. Mine seems to be working so far but we won't know fully until he gets more toward the, the process. But that always happens to students, and I think it depends on device and a bunch of factors, but students tell me, I did everything you did and I'm trying to deploy, it won't deploy, what does this error mean? Usually the error is, again, it's already installed and it's having a hard time reinstalling it. So just delete it from your device and it should work. Let's see here, installing app on device. Yeah, it's doing it. So mine is no problem. Yours might be a problem. Again, uninstall your device. Uninstall your, your app from your device. So I got my test app. I tap photo, nothing happens. That's where we ended last time. And here's what's going on. I'm going to go back to on Windows Explorer. I'm going to go to apps, I'm going to go to test, and I'm going to edit the index file. Question? You know what, I think your particular computer might have an issue, so if you go to start and you're typing node and node does not appear, is that is that what the problem is? Okay, let me help you in just one moment. Let me finish my... No, you're not going to type CDF. You're just going to type F colon. Okay, let me help you in one moment. Let me finish my thought. Uh, so the problem here is on this index file, there's been something here staring us in the face that we haven't really looked at. Um, I have a button... Uh, right here, button on click, take photo, take a photo. It's got 
uh, a little bit of JavaScript. It's got a, a, a call to a JavaScript function on the button, attached to the button. That's the problem. Because if I back up to line 31, there's something called HTTP equiv, content security policy, content equals, a bunch of stuff. If I go back to the comment, there's a comment block here that this was not available on previous versions of Cordova. Line 28 says, disables the use of inline scripts in order to mitigate the risk of cross-script security vulnerabilities. To change this, enable inline.js, add unsafe inline to default source. So it's saying, any JavaScript that is inline, any JavaScript that is within the app itself, the way that we're doing it, is disabled to mitigate potential hacks. Um, you know, someone else's code on their server running on our app. There's, there's the possibility of that happening. Uh, it's remote, but there's the possibility. So it's been disabled. It says, okay, if you want to re-enable to use JavaScript like you've always done before, it says here, enable inline. Add, in, in quotes, unsafe dash inline to default SRC. Notice right here under that line 31, content equals default SRC. Um, this is part of the whitelist that defines what is safe, what is not safe, what can our app use, what can it not use. And so there's a few items that are already here. And what this is saying is we need to add unsafe inline to default SRC, default source. I see default source right there on line 31. And then I see self in quotes. And so what it's telling us is if right after default source, in quotes, double or single um, matters in this point, in this case, because we've already got double quotes on the outside, if we add double quotes on the inside, it ends the statement. So we want single quotes, unsafe dash inline, and then this should work. So we're saying what we're allowing is inline JavaScript. Yes? It is here, but technically it's being attached to style source. So this is a little weird to read. I had to read it several times to understand it. But basically from default source to this first semicolon is defining one set of attributes. And then we've got style source self, unsafe inline, semicolon, and then we've got media, wildcard. So here we're saying, um, what sort of style sheets can we use? We can use the ones built into this project and the ones that are unsafe. But we don't have anything about unsafe inline in, in the default stuff. So that's why we, we, we could, in this case, we're putting it more than once. So I'm going to save that. I'm going to run this back on my device. I'm running it on my device, and there it is. I, I took a quick photo from my app. I'm showing it right there on my uh, on my preview screen right here. So I am able to take a photo 
from from my app. I'm going to accept it because I've got cancel and accept. I accept it and it brought it back to my brought it back to my device right there. My test app. There's the photo. I didn't say anything about a size and so forth, but it put the photo in. So the big thing was that I needed to allow unsafe inline JavaScript right there on line 131. Okay. That's right. I'm on the index HTML of our test project. So try that a moment. I went I went a bit fast, but try that yourself for a moment. Uh, Cordova emulate
All right, everyone. So um, I know it's frustrating. This is frustrating. Uh, if there is a perfect confluence of all of these factors, then it works great and life is amazing. And if it doesn't work, then it's frustrating. But again, I have a particular device, I have a particular computer, I have this experience, and I make it look so easy. I know, because I've been doing this for years. You've just started this. So if it doesn't work perfectly exactly like I'm doing it, there's probably something that we can figure out. But that's going to require the individual help during the lab time. I can't stop you know, every time for every single person, what is your particular problem? If I can show, at least in concept, on a device, my device, or a virtual device, then it's doable in concept. If you can't do it on your particular one, what's the variable there? You. Now, I'm not trying to put anyone down, but I'm just saying, if it doesn't work with your particular setup, it's your particular setup. So, I'm going to move on, and you might have questions and such, but that's why I've got the video recorded, 
so that we can come back, you can come back at, at a point to check your code and all of that, but I'm going to move on now. So the whole point of this was that um, there's this line that, that is actually brand new with Cordova 5 for content security policy that is supposed to protect these the, uh, protect us from some vulnerabilities. The very short answer, I don't like this answer at the moment, but the short answer to alleviate some of the problems we're going to encounter, encounter is to comment that line out. That of course then potentially opens up our app to some security issues. Because what this is doing, again, it's restricting. It's not letting some things work. And that's why perhaps your camera doesn't work. But as I showed right here, it is working on this device. And a lot of people have this device. So it works. Um, the weird thing that I can't explain is, and let me run it myself, I don't know why it's not running on the emulator. And as I've said, I've taught this class for years. And this stuff... I test it over and over and over and it works but it looks like now with the latest Cordova there might be some quirks here and there that's why it's already on 5.1.1 I don't doubt that very soon there probably be, probably will be a 5.1.2 or 5.2.1 or something because uh, there was a big change between 4x and 5x so app development it's hard but then the rewards are, you know, good rewards if you've got an app out there. Let me try it on my emulator and then we'll go on. If it doesn't work, I still need to go on because, again, I got it to work on at least one device. In theory, then, it'll work on many devices. So I've got the splash screen, take a photo, I click take a photo. The screen goes dark. It switches to the camera, the emulated camera. I'm going to take a photo of that wild green square running around, that red square, and then I'm going to take a photo. I have either cancel or or take the or accept the photo. I click accept, and it brings the photo back to my app. That's what I was showing right here on my real device. Now, everyone here has an emulator. Everyone is following my exact instructions to create this emulator, so in theory, it should work for everyone. If it doesn't, again, the, the variable is you. No, not trying to put anyone down, but that's the variable that I'm seeing. If everyone's using the exact same code in theory, the exact same uh, emulator, there's a variable in here that's getting in the way. So the concept of this is, yes, I took a photo with JavaScript, with Cordova. I didn't, I didn't um, you know, format it or anything, so it just dumps the big photo on my screen and, and that's it. If I click take a photo again, it comes up again. Let me take another photo. There it goes running around. Take a photo. This time let's say I canceled it. it takes me, uh, I'm going to cancel it. It takes me back to the app and there was that fail condition. Fails because camera canceled. So in theory this works. It'll capture the data from the camera sensor or it'll give some alert that says why did this fail. in the JavaScript. Briefly, that's what I've got here. I'm trying to take a photo. I'm trying to get a picture. It will either be successful or not. When it was successful, it then displayed the image on screen. I didn't define any width and height, so it just put the full-sized one. On my device here, this is a huge photo because I'm using the full 10 megapixels of my, of my sensor. If I cancel it or there's some other failure, well then the unfail happens right here and I got the pop-up. Failed because whatever message the device is telling me. So again, it'd be great if, if this worked for everyone, but if not, um, if it worked for a couple of people, that's good enough for the moment, unfortunately. We have a lot of things to talk about still. But all of this is coming from uh, the documentation at cordova.apache.org. Just to get a show of hands, did, did any version of this work for anyone? A few people. Okay, good enough. I'm gonna close the. Uh, I'm gonna close those files, the index file. I'm, just, I'm gonna close my files in Notepad.
I'm actually going to, I should rewrite, I should renumber these. Um, I'm actually going to jump over to sheet number 8 first, and then back to 7. So maybe make a note that 8 should be 7, and 7 should be 8. On sheet number 8, let's take a quick look at sheet number 8 together. This is something that we're going to apply to the basic app. Remember on my flash drive, on your flash drive, you should have your basic project. That's your template that you're going to reuse. I want to set up an, an icon and splash screen. The default icon and splash screen, we saw that when we launched the app, we have uh, the little Cordova icon. And then also, if you look inside of your apps, you'll see that the name of the test app we were playing with was test and then you've got the Cordova icon. I want to talk about changing those icons. That icon there and the splash screen and that's in my sheet here. It's two things that we'll do. And this of course all comes from the Cordova documentation. So uh, you must add your own app icons or else it will install the generic Cordova lo logo. What we're going to do together is we're going to create a new folder within our project. Not in the WW folder however on the top level. We're going to create a folder called res, stands for resources, and then inside of that res folder we're going to create a folder called Android because we could have different icons for Android, different icons for Windows Phone, different icons for iOS. So each particular you know uh, resource for each particular platform has its own folder. We're going to deal with Android at the moment so we will create an Android folder together. Then we're going to add these different versions, these different sizes of icons, these square icons in ping format, 24-bit pings with transparency. If you've never worked with graphics before, that sounds like voodoo, but I'll show you what that means when we, when we open up Photoshop for a little bit. We need these uh, six icon sizes, 36 pixels up to 192 pixels because your app may be installed on an old low-end device that accepts the 36 pixel icon and it might be installed on a newer device that accepts the larger higher quality 192 pixel square photo or square icon so we're gonna provide those different sizes then we're gonna add a little bit of code in the config XML file that then says okay use those icons we'll look at this together of course but the the format is icon icon tag, it's self-closing, source, where's that icon? In the res folder, Android folder, and then whatever the name of that sized icon, and we're saying the density of that icon is for low DPI devices, low quality devices. Then we'll have the 48 pixel sized one for medium quality, 72 for high DPI, extra high DPI, extra extra high DPI, and the latest and the greatest, triple X high DPI. 192 pixels squared. And that will give us a brand new icon for our for our app instead of the Cordova. I've got an icon for you that we can use. Uh, so I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. On the other side of this coin, we've also got the splash screen. We want some sort of screen to appear before our main app loads for a couple of reasons. One is for user experience and branding, and the other is for to cover our bases. So what I mean is, I want uh, our my company logo to briefly appear, or maybe I want the a nice little graphic of my app to appear for branding purposes for my for the people that download my app to uh, to have a connection with my app to brand my app to them. What I'm also doing is using the splash screen as a sort of a pause mechanism to make sure that I've loaded all of the Cordova APIs, all of the Cordova code, before I start to use my app and it's not ready. So that's going to be like a bit of a pause. Once the Cordova code has loaded, then the splash screen will go away and our app is ready to use with all its functionality. This will also require that we create six different graphics, 24-bit pings, but without transparency. In these dimensions, they're all written down here, 
Notice we have way up here a HD TV quality size graphic fit into our app. Actually, a little higher than HD TV. Uh, we're going to give those each a name, anything we want really. We're going to put those also in that res Android folder. And then add the self closing tag splash source. So it's the it's the source, the path to that particular sized splash screen. And then we've got density. And here we're saying again, low DPI, medium, extra high, etc. And because we can have an app that is landscape or portrait, we could define what does the splash screen look like when it's in portrait mode, what does it look like when it's in landscape mode. Now remember, we locked our app to always be portrait, so that's why I'm not specifying a landscape splash screen. Our app just doesn't work in landscape, it's always portrait. We have another tag here, preference name splash screen, value screen. This is just something that is necessary for this to work. And then we'll add preference name splash screen delay and a value in milliseconds. 10,000. 10,000 milliseconds in real seconds is how long? 10 seconds. There's 1,000 milliseconds per second. So 10,000 milliseconds is 10 seconds. This splash screen is going to be visible for 10 seconds, which is an eternity. Why would we torment our users to stare at our splash screen for 10 seconds? I'm doing that to make sure to give us some, some leeway to cover the bases that all of the code is loading. But then we're going to add to our, eventually when we get here, we're going to add this to our JavaScript file. Uh, that's a mistake, misspelling actually, Kodika Extra JavaScript. Sorry about that. I'll mention that again. But on our JavaScript file, at the moment that the device is ready, we'll say, hide the splash screen. We're done with it. So it's not going to be displayed for 10 seconds. It's only going to be displayed as long as necessary for all of the Cordova code to become available. That's why I'm saying make it run for 10 seconds. It's got to load within 10 seconds. And then it'll hide it when necessary. All right, so let's set ourselves up a bit here. On, uh, on Explorer, on Windows Explorer, go back to your flash drive. I've got my apps of basic and test. What I'm going to do, I want to do this on the basic app. I want to set this up as part of my template. So that then I've got this set up, and then on future apps, I just need to change the graphic. The code is already waiting for us and works. Open the basic app. And as my notes say, what we're going to do then is create a brand new uh, folder structure here. In your project folders root level, create a folder called res. So this is the root level. This is above the WW folder. It's the root of the whole project. Let's create a new folder here. Call it res, lowercase. These are the resources for each individual platform. So um, open that res folder. And then inside the res folder, create another folder called Android. T type it lowercase, of course. And then open that folder. So make sure you're in the Android folder, in your res folder, in your basic project. This is where we're going to add the six icons and the six splash screens. I have for you some starting points. In, uh, in the network folder, remember I asked you, uh, you should copy sheets 7 and 8, and I've also got icons and splash folder. If you open the icons and splash folder, I've got my starting points. It's not all the icons, where we need to define them together, we'll do it together in just a moment. But I've got a 512 pixel sized icon very large, high quality. 
that's going to be our starting point to create the different sizes for the different devices. And then I've also got this splash screen. So when the app loads, we're going to see this briefly, as long as necessary, and then the app loads. So this is already up at the 1920 pixel range. We're going to use Photoshop to resize the app, uh, the, uh, the icons, uh, and then we'll have some icons for our project and we'll add the code. So what you can do is um, on your start menu, click on start, and let's type Photoshop. You got Adobe Photoshop. Uh, doesn't matter which one you open, I guess, but I'm going to open, if you see Adobe Photoshop CS 5.1 64-bit, click on that one. If you don't see 64-bit, just click on Photoshop. How many of you have any experience with Photoshop? A few people. Okay. Uh, so, of course, Photoshop is a big famous software to edit photos, graphics, all that stuff. In this room, apparently, we've got CS5, which is like uh, three or four versions behind, but it'll be able to do what we need. If you've never fo used Photoshop before, this is a big, complex software. We're only going to need it for two things, resizing our icons or, and cropping and saving them. So let's go to the File menu. Open. And go to your folder that you copied of these icons. I put mine on the desktop. Maybe yours is on your flash drive. But in Photoshop, open the Icons and Splash folder. And then open the Icon 512 ping file. So my notes, I say on number two, create 24-bit ping files with transparency in the following dimensions. Now my file currently has transparency, and again, if, if you don't know Photoshop, trust me, it's got transparency, because I can see through the, the color to the background, which is a checkerboard. It's transparent. That means that when I actually deploy this and it loads up on people's screens, they will see through the empty part to their background. If the background was completely white, like that, they would see a weird white square around your icon instead of the transparency, which would be their wallpaper. So you don't have to have a non-transparent icon, but if you look at all the icons of your device, like I'm looking at the Periscope icon, it's a little blue circle, and then there's edges of it that are transparent so I can see behind it. This is what I mean here. These icons here, the periscope icon is a circle, and then the edge is transparent, so we can see behind it. This hyperlapse icon, same thing. This icon for my app, there's transparency there. This one, uh, its concept is that it's a square, so there's nothing behind it, but that's what we're doing. That's why this is already transparent. If you don't know how to create a transparent graphic in Photoshop, well, that's a question best asked you know, and, and learned in a Photoshop class. But during the lab, of course, I can help. What we need to do is resize this image to the dimensions that that we need um, that, that are asked for. So there's a couple ways to do it. We'll do it this way, which might be the fastest. It kills two birds with one stone. Let's go to the File menu. Save for Web and Devices. Don't just click Save or Save As. Click Save for Web and Devices. Newer versions of Photoshop drop this part that says Devices, I think, and just says Save for Web but it still works. Save for web. This is the screen then where we save our graphic in a variety of formats. My notes say a 24-bit 
ping file with transparency. For some reason, mine switched over to a GIF file. That's not right. So under the preset, the easiest way to do this, under preset, select 24, uh, ping 24. That's what we want. A 24-bit ping with transparency. There's a preset for it, so we don't have to do it manually ourselves. There's a preset in Photoshop. At the bottom, I have image size. This is the current size of my icon. It's way too large. What did I say the largest dimension is? 192. So let's change width of 192. It should actually change width and height because their proportions are locked. This is going to be a little square, 192 pixels with transparency. So now my icon shrunk like that. You can't see it on my monitor here, but you should have a button. Does it say OK or does it say Save? It says Save. OK, click the Save button. I want to save this icon in the folder, that Android folder, in our project folder. So here in, in Photoshop I can do that also. So I can select Save In at the top here. And I'm going to go to my flash drive. I will go to my Apps folder, Basic folder, Res folder, Android folder. Right? Android Res basic apps on my flash drive. And I'm going to call this icon 192. Just to confirm. Icon192.png. Then you can click Save. It processes it. And in my in my Android folder project, now I've got an icon for the XXX high DPI devices. I'm going to do the same thing for the other sizes. Back here in Photoshop, I'm going to go again. File, save for web. This time at least it remembered, I still want ping 24. Good. And I still want transparency. Good. But now I want a size of what? 144. So I'm going to do this a few times. I've got the 144 size. save and good thing here also then it remembered okay you saved last time into your Android folder great I'm going to save to my Android folder but I'm going to change the name that it's suggesting to say icon 144 Again. So yeah, it's going to be a little redundant. That's why we're doing this as our basic project, as our template, to get this experience. And then when you've got your own app with your own graphics, you'll need to do this. But um, the next size is 96. So let me give you a moment to do that. Do all, do all of those six sizes, and then we'll do the splash screen together. It's going to be similar, but actually a little quirky. So try the six icon sizes on your own, save them all to that folder, and then we'll do the code part.
right, so let me give you a moment to do that, then we'll write the code. You should have those uh, six icon sizes, and we'll move on. So I already have this icon and splash screen ready for you, but obviously if you were working on your own app, you would have to set this up yourself. And a lot of times people had come to this class, you know, you're, you're really good in the realm of, of, of logic and programming and such. But then this is the opposite side of that, isn't it? It's the artistic side, the graphical side. This took effort to design. It's a nice icon. But I couldn't do it perhaps if I'm, if I'm more of a programmer. So if you are going to make your own app now, you have to encompass all of that as much as you can. The, the logical programming aspect and then the artistic aspect as well. Because you need to put an app icon, you're not going to rely on the Cordova icon. You're going to need to put together a, a logo for your company maybe. You're going to need to put together a splash screen and other graphical assets for your project. So it behooves you to be as well-rounded as possible. But if not, what I can say is, let me briefly mention this website that might be useful to you if you're not artistic. There's a website where people, where you can hire people to do quick little jobs for you for five dollars. You can have them write a song for you, you can have them paint a picture for you, you can have them draw an icon for you. Now five dollars might not give you the best results, but there are some really talented people here. Uh, it's up to you to research it yourself, but this is a website called Fiverr.com. I think it's got two R's. F-I-V-E-R-R.com. Fiverr. You give someone a Fiverr, and then they'll they'll create something for you for five dollars. What do you need done? Find it on Fiverr. Browse by done. So, elevate your design, get a killer resume, get a trendy logo. I will draw a cute cartoon avatar for you, $5. I'll make an illustration of any food and drink, $5. So let's say you're making a cooking app, but you don't know how to, you don't know how to make graphics for that app. This person is selling drawings for five dollars. Now I don't know the details, how many drawings, probably one drawing, I don't know if they will draw more drawings, but I'm just showing you here that you can buy a bunch of things for five dollars, such as I will play your song in a real retail store. So this guy will walk into a store and sing your song for five dollars. I will create a beautiful custom photo, save the date card. So if a big event is coming for five dollars, Shelby Mullen will design it for you. Anyway, you go here, you, you browse $5, get yourself some logos for your app. F-I-V-E-R-R dot com. Fiverr. But by now you should have those six icons. Now let's add the code to, for, for Cordova to use these icons in your app. That requires that we go back to your config XML file. So we'll go back to the root of your basic fold or your basic project and let's edit a notepad notepad the config XML file. These icons have been have been sized to work for Android. Um, their dimensions are not exactly what the iPhone is looking for, or a Windows Phone is looking for. So these icons then have to be targeted to the Android platform. So the code we're about to add will be inside of the platform name Android, inside of line 21, because these icons only apply to Android. Make a new line 25, so a new line after the preference of target SDK, 
I'm going to write this once and then we'll copy and paste it. Uh, so this is on uh, sheet on uh, step number four. Uh, I'm going to write the open and closing tags first just because just because uh, again I like to write the pair. This is a self-closing tag so we've got angle bracket space slash angle bracket. This is going to be icon space src equals quotes. We'll fill that in in a moment and then we'll further add density equals quotes. We're saying we're going to define an icon for Android. Where's the path? Where's the source of that icon? And for what density? What quality screen? So our path should be res, res, slash android, slash icon, 36.png. I don't believe the order of these matters, but I'm just putting them from smallest to largest. And then density, I'm saying this is the LDPI quality. So if I've got a low density device, like this ancient Motorola Droid X, then the then the 36 pixel size icon is perfect for it. On a newer device over here, this LG 730, then I think the, the medium the medium quality icon works. And then for like the newer, if you've got the Moto E, then the probably the extra high or maybe even the extra extra high density will work. So that means if we've got one, we need to add the others. Double check your spelling. Make sure I spelled it right and it's on the sheet. Density. Copy that and paste it five more times. Then we just need to change a couple of things. So copy that, paste, paste. Is that the Is that what? No. Because remember, our, our, we're editing the config file. The config file is at this level, therefore we go directly to res. If we were in www, then we would need dot dot slash to go back and then into res. Okay, so I've got six copies in total. And so now, logically, we're going to change, okay, what's the next size up? We've got 36, next is 48, so that's icon 48, and then density M DPI, medium DPI. The next size that we created was 72, so icon 72, and that is H DPI, high density. HDPI. The next size is 96. That one is XHDPI, not just XDPI, XH, extra high DPI. And then since there's always one more higher, then we've got next size is 144, and that one is extra, extra high DPI. And lastly, we have the 192 size, and that is extra, extra, extra high DPI. I don't think they thought that through, because what comes next? Are they going to just keep adding X's to that? Or maybe they're going to start with Z DPI or something. And what happens after that? Z A DPI, I don't know. So I think this is enough that we need here. Let's save it and run it. At the moment, the icon of the app is still the Cordova mascot. But now that we've specified this brand new set of icons, so I'm going to show you this first. I'm going to show you my screen, what it looks like before. I don't have the basic app installed, but I'm going to install it in a moment. And then I will do Cordova run Android. Can you show on the right side the text? The text where? This text? Do you have the sheet also? Because everything's coming from the sheet. 
So I'm going to let that run on my device and then I'll show you what it looks like. You should also run it. What you want to do is launch the app, let it run, and then exit back to your app screen because that's where we added the, the icon. It's not in the app itself, it's the icon of the app. Oh, and then of course, I loaded the wrong app because easy to forget which app you're working with. Uh, I'm, in, I'm still in the test. So CD back to basic. There we go. I'm in the basic app now, and now I'll run that. See that I accidentally, without thinking, I just did Cordova run, but I was inside the test project. Whoops. So here's a trick here. CD back, CD dot dot to take you back, but then I also added the path backslash basic, and that jumped my back one folder and then into basic folder. Right, so what I'm expecting is I'm going to refresh my device capture here. Here it is. So here's my basic app, and it's got the new icon instead of the Cordova icon. On my emulated device, I'm going to see the same thing in just a moment. So on my uh, virtual device, I'm going to exit the app by going back home. I'll go to the app drawer, and there it is. There's the basic app with that icon. And so notice the, the app drawer here has a dark background, so you see past the edge. There's no white square behind it because that icon has transparency. And when I showed you on my, on my virtual device, I can see through it and I see the white background of my app tool. That's why we want transparency in our icons. And so we're setting this up in the in the basic project so that we can have this starting point for future projects. Uh, we're going to take our, our first break, and when we come back, well, then we're going to add the, the splash screens. So now that we'll have a splash screen that loads up as a preview of our app, um, and then the app loads up when, when the device is ready. So let's take a break at 7.25. We'll be back at 7.35, and then um, we'll go on.